So I'll just be reminded that uh, you have been invited to think his thoughts and to uh, speak his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
God, glory to God, glory to God. You may be seated. Praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. of my job as a minister to bring you in remembrance of the Word of God. Amen? And uh, that portion of Scripture that we just read is um, ammunition, if you will. Um, the Bible says, you are my weapon of war, speaking to us. And uh, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle. Amen. There is a wrestling going on, and it's very strenuous. It's very strategic. Unfortunately, it's very long-running, all right? And uh, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers. And Amen. And, and a lot of the battle is, um, is uh, you know, when you think about it, um, Jesus won the spiritual battle. So the devil has no legal right to you and to me. Jesus has defeated him, amen? Yes. But the way he accesses people is through our thoughts. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if he can gain access to our minds, then he can dominate us with fear, intimidation, and uh, um, you know, uh, insecurity, inferiority, all these things, doubt, unbelief, okay? Um, and so uh, you're a weapon, amen? But a weapon has to be sharp to be useful, glory to God. So it's up to us to be sharp. But I liken it to not only an axe or something like that, an old-fashioned weapon, there's nothing wrong with that, but a military weapon today, whether it be a, a, a rifle, whether it be a cannon, whether it be a, a uh, you know, long-range missile, it's okay, think of yourself as a long-range missile, praise God forever, to destroy the works of the enemy, praise God forever. But one of the things that he wants to, the Lord wants us to remember is the entrance of his word brings light. So we have to load ourselves with ammunition so that we can fire uh, upon the powers of darkness. And as I said, the number one way the devil finds access to us is not in the spirit realm, because he's been defeated in that realm, but in our intellectual, in our mind. And so uh, when the thoughts come into our mind, I can't do it. The Bible says I can do all things. So that, but you have to know that. So if you don't know that, then it can't, you can't shoot that missile. And the worst thing to happen to a to a, a a gun or a rifle or a or a missile silo is not to have any missiles or not to have any belt bullets in the gun, all right? Especially in a time of need. And so I mentioned this scripture, and I want you to write it down because um, it says here in the um, King James version, Jeremiah twenty nine verse eleven. Jeremiah twenty nine verse eleven. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. Amen? So when the, when the enemy comes in with thoughts of failure and defeat and worry and anxiety and stress and all these things, you have God's word. 
And as his word comes to your remembrance by the Holy Spirit, and because you have put it in, amen, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. So that's why I had you write it down so you can read this scripture over yourself on a regular basis, amen? You know, the devil would say, I know the thoughts I have for you, but God says, no, I know the thoughts I have for you, he says. Now you think my thoughts, don't think his thoughts. Give no, the Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Give no place to the devil. Resist the devil and he'll flee. And again, my brothers and sisters, the number one place of battle is between our ears. Amen? Our minds. And that's why our motto scripture, it's been there all along. It is the Lord himself who spoke this. Amen? Is don't be conformed to this world. Don't do it, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's a lot to say about the mind in the word of God. Amen. Your body basically is the suit that you wear to negotiate this planet. And yes, it's fearfully and wonderfully made. Take care of it. Protect it. Enjoy the blessing of it. Don't let it control you. Amen. And your spirit is the real you. And your spirit is free. And soars with God, amen, and, and, wants to, and wants to move forward in triumph always, hallelujah, but it's our minds that are, they, that's basically makes up the mind, it makes up the, the difference, whether we're going to go forward or we're going to be held back. The Bible says, as a man or woman thinketh in their heart, so are they, amen? It, it's as we think, I can't do it. And you've been taught that, or you've been told that, or you believe that, or people around you tell you, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. You struggle with it. Mm -hmm. And then inferiority kicks in, insecurity kicks in, all these other things start kicking in, and that needs to be removed. And the only way it can be removed is with the Word of God. Amen? So scriptures like that and many others, for I know, the, for I know, the thoughts I think towards you. And then he says, say to the Lord, this is, these are the thoughts, thoughts of peace, not evil, to give you an expected end, success and blessing and victory. Amen, you with me? So it's very important that we, that we uh, study the word of God uh, uh, diligently to understand uh, how we are to uh, renew our minds to the word of God, amen? Yeah, um, I, I've said it before, I have my notes and I, I'm ready to preach, but I'm just gonna follow and obey God, amen? Um, it, it is helpful to us. The, the Bible says that, um, remember we, um, um, somebody helped me find that scripture um, about um, the thoughts, as I said, strongholds and uh, imaginations and um, fascinations. You know, a thought will come into our mind whether a good thought or, or a bad thought. And uh, 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 let's, let's do a good thought. Follow me for a moment. You have a good thought, and it's, uh, it's going to bring blessing to you and to your family. It's going to bring uh, strength to you and your family. It's going to bring, um, uh, you know, God's, God's prosperity to your family. And you have a thought. You, have a, you get an idea, so to speak. And if it's a good idea, you bring it before God and he gives confirmation, the word of God bears it out. That's a good thought. It's a God thought. So what do you do? You think about it. Amen. You meditate, meaning that you consider it. You think about it. You pray about it. It begins to open up. It begins to become an imagination. You can actually see it. Amen. And then after a while, you, you can see it, but now you, you got to bring it to light. So now it's got to become uh, uh, more of, a, of an imagination. It's got to become a fascination. It's got to be something that, that occupies a lot of your time thinking about it, you know, and praying, and, and, and Lord, when do I do this? And, and God's putting the pieces together, and I'm excited, and all the rest of it. And then it becomes something, I, I, I don't like the word stronghold, but it becomes something that's settled and established. And, 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 it, and, and you give yourself to it, and it occupies uh, your time and your life. Amen? Now, that's a good one. I don't rarely ever share that side of it, but it works the same way. 
But uh, the devil, unfortunately, uh, will use that against us. So a thought will come, and it's a, a, a demonic thought. It's an ungodly thought. It's a crippling thought. You know, I'm, 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 I'm sick. I'm, 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 I'm poor. I'm, I'm, I can't do it. Uh, it's too big. It's impossible. It's too hard. And, and those thoughts, you know, they come, and we've all been there. And, and then they bring fear, and fear, the Bible says, has torment. So, it, you know, it starts as a thought. And you and I know that if you don't arrest it, when it's a thought, when it's an idea, if it's bad, if it's demonic, it'll just continue, like I showed you the example in the good way, a thought will eventually become an imagination. And you'll think about it, and consider it. It'll take up time in your life. You begin to, you know, dominate, then a fascination. You begin to dominate the way you think. You can't see anything but lack and want and fear and, and hopeless. And, and, and are you with me? And then eventually what happens if you focus on it enough, it'll, it'll, it'll sleep in your bed with you. It'll go to bed with you. It'll, it'll wake up with you. It'll be the topic of conversation in your home. And before long, it will become manifested in your life as a stronghold. Do you find that scripture? Thank you. Thank you. All right. So it's amazing how God shows us. There it is. Thank you so much, Loretta. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, God shows us how to, how to live, how, how to think. And since the battlefield is the mind that we have to spend time, amen, renewing our mind to the word of God. And I said it before, you know, one reason why our church isn't full to overflowing is because a lot of people don't want to hear messages that cause them to do something. They just want to hear how God will bless them and, and how life is, is good and, 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 you know, prosperity is, your, is yours and you don't have to do anything for it and it's just automatic. And none of that's true. It's all smoke and mirrors. Amen? And, and I'd be willing to say God's not in most of it. Amen? But when, because Jesus, how, how many know he had a lot of people follow him, but he only had 12. And even them, at the end, uh, you know, when it really came down to it, they all forsook him except for John. So it's not a, a compromise or it's not an excuse or anything like that, but I commend you for, for hearing and for, for listening because it's God's word and God's will to, to, to completely revolutionize and transform your life. Amen? And God desires it for you and for me. Hallelujah. But unfortunately, not everybody wants what God desires for them. Many people, I've been doing this a long time, they want what they want. And they want it in, in their, on their terms. Yeah, I want to be blessed, but I, I read a quick article about a couple, young couple, a uh, handsome couple, came to a pastor and asked him, a prophetic pastor, and asked him for a prophetic blessing over their, their union. And without even hesitating or praying about it, he turned to them and he said, are you two sleeping together? And their faces dropped, and he says, you know, go home and, and pray and, and repent and stop sleeping together um, and, uh, and then come back and I'll pray blessing over. And so they walked out of the church and they gave him the bird as they were walking out the door. You know what I mean by the bird, anybody? You know? So if that's, unfortunately, many people want. They want the blessing, but they don't want, they don't want you know, the change. They want to be, stay the way they are. They don't want to be, uh, you know, challenged or, or you know, with me. But that doesn't matter. The word of God is the word of God. And, and when Jesus walked the earth, he was not politically correct or socially acceptable. He was very confrontational. He got a lot of people, you know, offended at him. And it wasn't his because of him. He didn't cause it. That was their response to the word of God. And this is Jesus, the word of God made flesh, almighty God in the earth. And they were rejecting him and they were accusing him and they were trying to kill him prematurely. Are you with me? 
So, you know, part of it is on what I'm building into you is you're going to have to realize that you're going to face persecution. It's not going to be an easy road. But if you do what God says, you will, it will revolutionize your life. Amen? To the glory of God. And so, as we mentioned here, uh, you know, I don't have time to uh, go through the whole study. I could. I could really uh, just do the best I can to obey God. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, glory to God. Um, Paul was another one. He, um, he didn't pull any punches. Paul was a very... Uh, straightforward, in your face, and it's interesting how God used him to write a lot of the New Testament, amen? Uh, and the epistles to the churches, how, how are you supposed to act in your marriage? How are you supposed to act in, in your family? How are you supposed to act in business? And it's not so, you know, a, a front, like an, an, an outward a show, an Academy Award, but the inward intents, amen? The Bible says if a man lusts after a woman, he's already committed adultery with her in his heart. And so, you know, men seem like they have no problem, you know. I know I, I don't have TikTok. I don't have Instagram. I don't have, you know why? Because there's a lot of women, sexual stuff out there. I don't need to be reading, looking at those things, you know, going through YouTube videos or or whatever. Even Nick taught me YouTube videos many times, you know, if they have a lot of likes or whatever, they're not godly and, and all. And so I don't. And, and I don't play with Instagram and all the rest of it because Instagram, again, is a lot of, you know, scantily clad women and all the rest of it. I don't need to be feeding myself that, going through TikTok videos, looking for a fishing video, but seeing so many other videos that are compromising. So I don't have them on my phone. I refuse to allow them on my phone. How much is a decision people have to make? And so, you know, if you spend a lot of time on your phone innocently looking at TikTok videos of scantily clad girls and whatever on there and you're a guy, how many know you're, 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 you're opening yourself up to, to defeat? It's your, the thoughts of your mind. Remember, it starts as, a, as an idea. It becomes an imagination. Then it becomes a fascination. And eventually it becomes, you know, it consumes you. And, and so better, the Bible says, better pluck your eye out. So how do you pluck your eye out? Not literally pull your eye out of your head. But don't participate in this stuff. It's a, it's a choice you have to make, amen? And it, it's not easy. It's not, you know, it, it, every, well, everybody's got Instagram. Everybody's on social media. Everybody's, everybody's that, you know? And, and no, not everybody. You with me? And so um, here, where am I? Yeah. So he says, in, uh, as I said, Paul, very straightforward. Hallelujah. Um, anyway, he says here, I'm trying to find out where to uh, start. Amen. Uh, chapter 10, verse 1. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am in present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. He's got getting a lot of persecution from, from people, sometimes from the church, you know, from the religious people. Sometimes the, the, uh, the persecution doesn't necessarily come from the outside. You can deal with that. You know, they're sinners. They don't understand. God, I'll pray for them, for them to come to salvation. But, but when people who, are, who know better still going to persecute you because, you know, you, you, you know, certain talk makes them uncomfortable. Certain, you know, behavior makes them uncomfortable. Speaking the word of God, you know that by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed. Some of them don't know what in the world is that. I'm sick and I know I'm sick. And the doctor says I'm going to get worse.
worse and it's not going to get better and and you're telling me that by the stripes of Jesus I was healed and then eventually they won't call you no more they don't want to hear that you with me and, and but the truth but it's the truth and the truth is meant to set us free glory to God you with me so anyway let's just finish this out here so, so he says for though amen um, he, he's saying I'm, 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 I'm I'm, I'm talking to you with meekness and gentleness. Amen. I'm bold when, you're, when I'm not present with you. But in reality, I'm a very meek and quiet kind of guy. But when I'm, but when I'm talking to you and, you know, flowing in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes on me and uses me very bold. Because that's what you need. Amen. So he says for verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen? Are you with me? So in this case, my, my um, example is reversed. But isn't it just like God to go after the, the final? The devil says, it, it's it, it's over. It's become a stronghold in your life. It's all consuming. It's all you think about. It's you, you bought it hook, line, and sinker. There's no hope. It's over. You're done. You're mine. And the word of God says, no, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So even if it has become a stronghold, a habit, a, a, a whatever, you know, a... a overwhelming, uh, you know, life choice. There is hope. There's always hope. Amen? And, and his name is Jesus, the Word of God. And so notice what it says here. Um, uh, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Amen. Now it continues on, and you certainly want to read it, but did you hear he mentioned it so many times that he identifies where the main struggle is? All right? It says here, uh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal, they're not fleshly, but they're mighty. And, and you would think to yourself, well, they're mighty to God to what? The powers of darkness? No. Jesus has defeated the powers of darkness. Amen? He's talking about pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing, idea, preoccupation. Are you with me? that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What's the knowledge of God? God's thoughts, God's ways, amen? And bringing into captivity what? Every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. So thoughts that are rogue, if you will, thoughts of, of failure, thoughts of of, of compromise, thoughts of the list goes on and on. God calls them disobedience. He says, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So that's what we've been talking about. Amen. We, we've come to back to where we were uh, studying here in, in our study last week, and I'll pick it up from here this morning, and we'll do a little bit more, but it's all about obedience. Amen? Yeah, and I know it's not necessarily a popular message, but how many know it's God? Amen? And it's a message God wants preached. He's calling the body of Christ. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't gotten the leading by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Uh, about the future. I know what the Bible says. I don't know if the Lord's going to return today. Are you with me? I don't know, you know, uh, what what is happening in the future, but like I say, not to coin a phrase, but I know who holds the future. Amen? 
and, and he has given me direction. He says, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't do it. Amen. Believe in God. Believe in me. Have faith in me. So think my thoughts. Speak my words. Settle your heart on them. Give no place to the devil. Don't think his thoughts. Don't speak his words. Amen? And, and when the time comes when we are, you know, stand before the Lord, the Bible tells us that we will have to give reason for every idle word. So words that didn't produce life, words that didn't produce godliness and righteousness, amen? And, and what would you think idle words might be? Defeat, failure, compromise. Are you with me? Amen. I'm not getting a lot of amens, but that's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe heaven's shouting, glory to God, because this, is the, this has been, you know, I did this study to show you that it, it, it's basically courses through the whole Bible from the very beginning to the very end. Amen? The, the, in the very beginning, you know, as well as I do, Adam and Eve, what did they do? Did they obey? No, they didn't. They disobeyed. Did it cost them? Oh, yeah. The devil said, it's going to be better. Was it better? It was not better. Their sin, their sin expelled them from that place that God had prepared for them. The devil knew it, and that's what he desired. So that's why he planted the thoughts. God didn't say, if the fruit is not bad, what do you mean you can't eat it? He said you can eat everything. Well, why? I guess he's trying to withhold something from you. So, you know, he's got a trick. He's got an ace up his sleeve. There's something fishy going on over here. And at that moment in time, Adam was supposed to say, out of here. You have no legal right here. But he didn't. And he started to consider. And it became an idea. An idea became an, an imagination. I'm not positive they ate that moment. Who knows? But the thought, think about it. Well, maybe God didn't tell me everything. Maybe, maybe he's not as, as pure as I thought he was. What are they doing? They're listening to that voice, and they're, it's building it, a thought, an imagination, a fascination. Now, there's nothing that matters no more. They're, they've been given a right to all the, everything in the garden is them. Now it has become the tree is the only thing I can think about. And then they went and they, they ate. It became, it became, you know, a habit. It became a stronghold. We, we are really struggling. Please help us. And he will. He'll say, the devil's lying to you. And the reason, and I've told you before, the reason why God told them not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil wasn't to hide something from them. Like any good father, he did not want them to know what evil was, what an evil smelled like, what it looked like, how it affected you. God himself is standing there would, 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 would fellowship with them. Nick preached on fellowship. Would fellowship with them in the cool of the evening. He was already uh, an ever-present help in time of need. He was there in the garden to fellowship with them. And they enjoyed it thoroughly. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Yeah, praise God. So they had it literally. They had it all. And God, like any good father, says, you know good. Because you have me. But that tree will unlock something I don't want you to experience. So don't eat it. And that was just trust. It's a matter of trust. Believe that I don't need anything. There's nothing I lack. You're everything I need. And it's still true today. But the devil put the thought in their mind. I'm missing something. Whatever it is I'm missing, that tree holds the, holds the key. Mm -hmm. And so they ate of it. 
And again, a good father that he is, an amazing father he is, a tremendous father that he is, he didn't want us to know fear and pain and regret and remorse and anxiety and, and, and terror and, and uh, betrayal. And, and, and the list goes on and on. What, think about it. Do a study. It'll bless you. Do a study of what is evil. Amen? Jesus went about doing good, healing all those oppressed of the devil. So what are some of the things that Jesus came against? Leprosy, huh? Oppression, Oppression leprosy, a uh, woman with the issue of blood 12 years. Uh, uh, what's that word? Uh, when, when you give up all hope, when, when everything is hope, all your hope is gone. Desperation. Desperation. Come on, right? Yeah. You, would you think, we just read her Wednesday night on our, would you think she was desperate? Yeah. 12 years she had an issue of blood. She spent everything she had on doctors and was no better. She was worse. Talk about desperate. And she came to Jesus for she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. And so she did what she said. It wasn't brand new. It wasn't a quick thing. It was an idea. And then she began to think about it. She said, how can, I how can I make this happen? The next time I hear Jesus is anywhere in my vicinity and I can get to where he is, she's considered unclean, she can't be in public, she's a, a, a disgrace as far as people are concerned. They would avoid her like the plague because she, they consider what she had a plague. She probably had an odor about him, her, she's flowing blood. Are you with me? Her coloration must have been out of whack. Come on, the list goes on and on. But this woman, it was not just a quick, spontaneous, it was, I got to get to Jesus. And when I get there, I'm going to have a hard time getting to him. So I got to make up my mind. So she said, all I got to do is touch. Think about it. She's thinking. It becomes, it becomes an imagination, a fascination. It becomes, you know, now she's going to make up her mind. Eventually, it becomes a decision that is immovable because she's not going to let nobody, no how, no way, stop her from getting to Jesus. So read the story. She went to him, and when she could go no further, she got on her hands and knees. And when she could go no further, she got on her belly and crawled. And she touched the hem of his garment. And when she did, we just read it from Matthew, he's turned and he says, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has healed you. And she was healed instantaneously at that moment, healed. Man, how many know what God has for you is good? But sometimes it's going to require, you know, some, some diligence. You're going to have to stop thinking wrong thoughts. Oh, nobody cares for me. There's no hope. It's never going to change. And, you know, all these different things. Where are those thoughts coming from? From the pit of hell. You have to identify them, and then you have to think God's thoughts. Is anything too hard for God? The answer is no, emphatically no. Is it ever too much? Never. All things are possible. Amen? Come on, my brothers and sisters. And so this is why it's so very important that we have to fill ourselves with the Word of God so we have uh, something to combat the thoughts of the devil. If we don't have something to combat the thoughts of the devil, then those thoughts will, will get in. So that's why we sang it. That's why we're told many times, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So think my thoughts, amen? My words are higher than your words. So you can't win using your thoughts and your words, but you can win using my thoughts and my words. Good, right? Good preaching. Amen. Amen. And, and that's what he's called us to. And the end result is always victory. Every time Jesus went about doing good, healing all those oppressed of the devil, what was the condition of all those that Jesus touched? Was it worse than when he touched them or better? Better by far. Amen. 
Do you think that woman was, was grateful? Do you think her life changed because of that um, meeting with the Lord Jesus? Yeah, come on. No longer an outcast. Her color came back. The, 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 this plague that she had endured, she had to get back to a life, you know, meet people, meet friends, establish, you know, a life she, she'd not had for at least 12 years. It's a long time. We read about, remember I shared with you about Abraham and Sarah. Sarah was beautiful, but she could not bear children. She was barren. And she was a mockery, and she was reproached, and she was ridiculed, and, and whenever she went by with Abraham, they thought Abraham is so, he's so rich, he's, he's, so, he's so godly, and, and he's married to that. She had to hear that with that same kind of tone and, and the jeers and the looks and the shameful. She had to deal with it all for a long time. And when God told her that she would have a child, she laughed at first. She didn't believe it. But something happened between that time when God spoke and Hebrews 11 because the Bible says she received strength to conceive seed even, so, though because she was, even though she was past age because she judged him faithful who promised. Amen. And because she judged him faithful, those thoughts of failure, barren, ridicule, mockery, reproach, remember that word, you know, uh, uh, inferior, insecure, the list goes on and on. Those thoughts were replaced. Amen? Because it says, for she believed God. So she began to believe. It started off, come on, there was a lot of time for her to feed those feelings of insecurity and who knows how long. She was barren. For, it happened for a long time. Could have been many years of desperation, of despair, of, of depression. You know, nowadays they medicate people to deal with these things. How many know it's not a medical thing? It's not a physical thing. Amen? As, as a man thinks, so is he. So what needs to change? The way you think. So she was rebuked by the angel. Don't laugh. I stand in the presence of God and when God speaks, it happens. So somewhere she got, she took the correction. It had become a stronghold. Come on, it became all she can think of. But the Spirit of God gave her the key. And she began to think, but God said, come on, this is it, my brother. I'm helping you, brothers and sisters. But God said, so whatever your, your circumstances, situation may have been, even if it's gone so long and it's become a habit and it seems like there's no end, you need to say, but God says. Just stop, arrest it. Amen? Put the handcuffs on it and say, no more. You will not act in my life anymore. I refuse. So, but God said, and so she thought about it, but God said that when he, I return, that he returns, you know, that I will have a child. And she believed it. And it began to, began to change. He changed her name. He changed Abraham's name. When they were in public, they used their transformed name. They would not use their limited name, the name that was holding them in bondage any longer. They were going to speak their, their, their new name and speak it out boldly. And what happened? She meditated on it. It became a thought. It became an imagination. It became a fascination. It became all-consuming. It's all she talked about. God said, I'm going to have a baby. Do you think it was easy? Do you think people got behind her? Says, oh, praise God, sister. I'm with you to the end. You know, it's like, you got to be kidding me. You're a joke. I guess this is what happens when you're so desperate that you just make up, you're fantasizing. Come on. Was she fantasizing? No. She believed God. And it was replacing those thoughts of failure and lack with thoughts of victory and power. I know the thoughts I have for you. Plans that are good and hope and faith and love and victory. And what happened? We have it recorded. What happened? 
she gave birth to a beautiful, healthy, full-term, whole and healthy baby boy. Named him Isaac, which means laughter. Think about her. When do you think the last time she was able to really laugh? When she felt free from what people thought by her own limitations. Come on, I'm helping you. I'm preaching good to somebody, amen? <laughs> by her own limitations, by her own insecurities and, and what she could do to change it. It's fruitless, empty, useless, waste of time. But she got a hold of God's word. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? And it brought life to a barren womb. It brought life to a barren womb. It brought victory to a hopeless situation. Amen? She believed God. Thank you, Jesus. And she received strength to conceive seed, though she was well past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Thank you, Lord. So, Pastor Nick, you mean if I judge him faithful who promised, and I have found where he promises that he's going to be, heal me or strengthen me or bless me or keep me or any of the things that he promises, if I will meditate on them and replace thoughts of failure with his thoughts, and instead of speaking thoughts of failure, speak his word, you mean I can see victory in my situation? Yes, yes, emphatically yes, you have his promise, you have his word on it. Amen? Amen? The Bible says, come on, he watches over his word to perform it. Right. So what do we need to do? We need to be meditating on his word, speaking his word. And the Bible says, I've told you before, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro across the earth, seeking who he may prove himself strong on behalf of. Think about it. Yeah. I told you before, I was up on top of the Empire State Building, and I'm not real great with heights, but I was leaning over, looking down, and you know, the, the buses were like this big, and the cars were this big, and people were barely dots. And I had a mini vision happen so quick, I can't snap my fingers fast enough. And I saw the Holy Spirit hovering, like in the, in the book of Genesis, and, and he's looking, and I heard him say, uh, who, who has faith? And you know, many people, no disrespect for judging anybody, but many people have their heads down. Amen? Many people have their heads down. They're doing what they do. They're living their life. You know, they're, they're walking by their own strength and their own understanding and, and they're feeding the, the flames of, 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 of normalcy. Amen? But there, how many know there are those that are there that are crying out to God? Their hands are lifted. They say, Lord, it is hopeless, but you're my hope. Amen? I have no strength, but you're the strength of my life. Amen? I, don't, I have no ability to comprehend. I didn't get a, I, I, I never graduated first grade, but you are my wisdom and you are my knowledge and you are my understanding. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro across the whole earth seeking. He's looking for something. What? Faith. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Find it yourself. Amen. Mark it down, but then go find it. Your concordance. It's a quick thing on the internet. Amen. Amen. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro across the whole earth, seeking those he can prove himself strong on their behalf. Amen. He, he's looking for it. He wants to. Are you with me? So we're going to have to co co you know, cooperate. In, in this sea of humanity, you got to be able to say, Lord, you are my hope. You are my help. You are my ever-present help. You are my God. In you I trust. I bless you. I praise you. I thank you, O God. Amen? And, and what's the Bible say? Come on. He inhabits the praises of his people. So make him notice you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, it will never change. Oh, God, please do something about this and all the rest of it. That's not faith. That's despair and hopelessness. Faith is, but you said, but you told me. Your word declares, bring him remembrance of his word. Amen? Amen? Cause his eye to stop seeking and rest on you. Come on, my brothers and sisters. 
You're not trying to get him to do something he doesn't want to do. You don't have to feel as though, Lord, I wish, you know, I wish to God you would look my way. You know, Lord, in all your glancing, look my way. No. Amen. I would scare you if I did it. I, I'll, do, I'll do it a little. I won't do it too much. Amen. Son of David, have mercy on me. If I did it the way the man probably did it, you know why he was in despair? It was desperate. Son of David, have mercy on me. And they said, shut up, you filthy thing, you. Who do you think you are to speak to the master? You're, you're worthless. And what did the guy do? Come on, we have it in the word. Even louder. Jesus, son of David. I don't want to scare you. I'd scare the people across the street if I did it. Amen? But I would imagine he let it go. And every time the thought came or somebody came against him to say, no, 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 he got louder. Why do you think that story is recorded in the Bible? Because there are times you're going to have to get loud. And it's not only volume. It's the intent of your, of your heart. I'm not quitting. I'm not backing down. Amen. Amen? He's the answer. He's the victory. He has what I need. Amen. I have his word on it. So we're going to have to. And, I, and come on, in that story, that's why it's recorded. They weren't all like, yeah, brother, God bless you, you know. Come on, everything, come on, everything's going to be good. No, they belittled him. They mocked him. They jeered at him. But guess who didn't mock or jeer or ignore or belittle or ridicule him? The Lord Jesus. He says he turned. The man got his attention. And he said, bring him to me. Now all those, you know, religious folk out there, now all of a sudden, you know, they're going to do what God told them to do. God told them to do the same works. Amen? You should have heard him call, and you should have laid hands on him in the name of Jesus and healed the man. How many of the disciples got a hold of it yeah. later on? They did get a hold of it. Amen? At the gate beautiful, and even the shadow of Peter, and the story goes on and on about how the, the, the disciples got a hold of it. But at that point, they were still learning. And God was merciful. Amen? Aren't you glad he's merciful while we're learning? But he doesn't want us to learn forever. He doesn't want to be perpetual students. He wants to be doers. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. The hands of the sick, they'll recover. Cast out devils. Do the works. Amen? And I will confirm my word with signs following. So you speak my word, get them to speak my word, and I will manifest and show myself faithful on their behalf. Amen? Yeah, praise God forever. So I'm not going to get to my meds, but... Next week, we'll get to it. Amen? So just to be aware, obedience. Throughout the word of God, I told you that Adam and Eve didn't obey. They disobeyed. And not only cost them, it cost every one of us. Mm -hmm. Because of their sin, because of their eating of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil and bringing the, the knowledge of evil into the, the, the universe, we are all born into sin. We're not born innocent like Adam and Eve were. We're not born free from sin. We are born into slavery. The knowledge of evil has been released into the earth. So even at a very early age, we are buffeted by fear and anxiety and worry and doubt and unbelief and you know sometimes no disrespect okay I don't mean to be disrespectful but sometimes because the parents aren't teaching the children right you hear the kids say oh, I doubt that I doubt that I doubt that so they become professional doubters and then you have the other side of it entitled somehow I deserve it I've done nothing for it but I deserve it are you with me? I didn't even play in the game, and, and we lost terribly, but I get a trophy. Come on, my brothers and sisters. 
How many know that's not the way it works? That's the way the world works. That's the way the devil works, but that's not the way God works. Amen? What's the Bible say? If you don't work, you don't eat. That's hard, isn't it? But that's the truth. Amen? He's saying, he, he, he's very direct. He said, look to the ants, you sluggard. Yeah, see how they toil, see how they work. Amen? To provide for their colony, to provide for their family. Get a clue, you lazy thing, you. Come on. He's not pulling punches. He's not, he's, I said, oh, you, you can't say that today, Jesus. Yes, he says it today and will always say it. And it's not he who has to give account for what he says. It's everybody else has to give account for what we say. Amen? Because he's righteous altogether. He's perfect in all of his ways. Amen? Hallelujah. And so wisdom is to think his thoughts, speak his word, regardless of what people think what people say. And I know it's not easy, but that is what he said. He says, that is the one thing that you're going to suffer. Persecution. Not going to suffer sickness and disease. That price has been paid for you. And lack and want and destruction and failure. No, no, no. You are more than a conqueror through him who loved you and gave yourself, himself for you. Amen? That's who you are. You're more than a conqueror. I know the thoughts I have for you, he says. Come on, we read it in the beginning. Amen? Thoughts to give you a hope, a future, a good ending. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. But, as he said, but you're going to suffer persecution. Because other people are not going to want you speaking in tongues. Other people are not going to like when you're reading your Bible. You've, you've cleaned the house if you're a lady or whatever. You've cleaned the house, you've vacuumed, you've made your meals and everything else. You sit down for 10 minutes to spend time with God and read your Bible and you get, you get you know, phone calls come and people see you there and they think, what do you do, sit there all day? What do you do with your life? You know, what, what are you doing now? It's a waste of time. You listen to a, man, to a preacher, you listen to a Sunday message on, on YouTube or whatever the case may be. It says, I can think of a lot of, a, a hundred thousand other things to watch. He said, no, 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 but I'm choosing life. Amen. Amen? Yeah. How many know this? Again, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but it's, it's comical to me. You know? There are people that are completely, absolutely addicted to as my stomach turns. Amen? And, uh, and, 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 and a genital hospital. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You with me? I mean, really, you know, Days of our lives, am I really interested in despair and adultery and compromise and, you know? And don't get too close to a fire because you'll melt from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. With me? Yeah, there's just, we're surrounded by it. And nobody has issue with that. But if you say Jesus, now all of a sudden, you become a target. Don't let it move you, my brothers and sisters. You're right. They're not. Make up your mind. You're right. They're not. Pray for them. Amen? But don't let them cause you to compromise. Don't, don't let them shut you down, shut your mouth. You pray in tongues as you feel the Spirit of God encouraging you pray in tongues. And if they don't understand, you explain to them what it is. You teach them. If they still don't want it, you say, well, I'm very sorry, but it's important to me. And it's helping me to be stable in my life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I told you before, Smith Wigglesworth was a plumber many, many years ago. And his wife was a church-going believer. And he was not. And he got saved and he became a marvelous minister of the gospel and, and, and raised the dead and, and healed the sick and, and powerfully used of God. But in the early days, he was a plumber and his wife was home and, uh, and she was a good wife. She cleaned the house. She made his meals. She was there for him. She, everything was done. 
And uh, then she would say, Smith, I'm going to church. And he thought, what a waste of time that is. But he let her go. But then after a couple times of her leaving and going to church, he eventually started, the devil in him started, you know what, she's leaving. She must not think too much of you. Or the list goes on and on. Where's that coming from? Not from her, but from the pit of hell. And so eventually it came to him, I'm skipping the story. He says to her, I don't want you to go tonight. And she said, Smith, everything's done. Meal was delicious, yes. Dishes are clean, beds are made, house is spotless. I've done everything I could. I'm gonna to go to church, I need this. And he said to her, if you go tonight, I'm locking the door, you won't be able to get back in the house. How would you respond? Sure, the first response is, yeah, let me get a pot and he'll put you out of your, out of your misery, right? <laughs> you miserable thing, you. Sure, isn't that part of it, right? But what does she do? She says, no, Smith, I'm sorry, but and I love you, but God is first in my life. So she went. And when she got home, come on, this is a good story. When she got home, the door was locked. There was no way to get in the house. So again, she didn't pound on the door. She didn't call the police. She didn't break a window. She curled up on the outside on the, on the porch and went to sleep. In the morning when she woke up, she went to the door. The door was unlocked. She went in. Come on, come on, you ladies. God bless you, amen? She went in and she made breakfast with her mouth closed. And she presented him with his breakfast. And she told him, Smith, I love you. Have a wonderful day today. And on he went. Well, I want you to know her faith, because that's faith, and not willing to compromise. He finally, the, 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 the choice was taken from him. He gave himself wholeheartedly to God. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro across the whole earth, seeking who he may prove himself strong on behalf of, and her choices allowed God to show himself strong. Amen? If she would have hit him over the head with a pot, would that have been the answer? Maybe short term, <laughs> right? If she would have, you know, pounded on the door and broke the glass to get in the house, that would have been an answer, but short term. How many know he would, he would never change? He would go on and, and that would be it. But God was able to show himself strong on her behalf because of her not willing to compromise. And Smith Wigglesworth went on to be a powerfully used minister of the gospel. Read after him. It'll be a blessing to you. And it's all because his wife made good choices. Amen. Amen. You with me? So make good choices. Think good thoughts. Think God's thoughts. You know, nowadays you have to be careful. You can't just say think good thoughts. You know? Because it's not about thinking good thoughts. Well, it's not about my, my mind over matter. Well, if I think enough the thoughts, positive energy, you know, I've had people do that. They, they'll say, you know, please uh, send positive energy my way. You know, I'm thinking to myself, what the heck is positive energy? Well, I hope everything works out, but it probably won't. What's positive energy? If you want, please pray for me. Now you're talking. Now it's a matter of invoke God to move on your behalf. How many know that's, that's something completely different? Yeah. You know, I've heard people say, you know, you know, please invoke the powers that be. What are you talking about? Trees, birds, rocks? No, you, you, everyone who came to Jesus acknowledged who he was. Be bold. Like the Apostle Paul says, I'm, I'm timid, you know, in my everyday life. But under the anointing, when I'm in a place of ministry with one-on-one -on -one or multiple, I get I'm the bold, I become bold. I don't take no for an answer. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, um, that's all I can give you for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Praise God forever, and um, we'll pick up from here next time, and we'll continue. I know we have to uh, do this in a moment, but let me pray and. 
Um, Father, we thank you so much for the time that we're able to spend together. That's how we pray always, that our services would pl be pleasing to you first and would be what your people need. And we are grateful. We are thankful. Um, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you expand our ability to comprehend. Because I know I gave a lot. I, I downloaded a lot this morning. Um, by the Spirit of God, I'm convinced. But Lord, I thank you and I trust you that you give them the ability to comprehend a lot. And then process it. Amen? There is no computer that is able to process quicker than a human being. There is no, I, what do you call it, artificial intelligence that can, that can compare to a human eyeball. And, and, and it's amazing how no matter what anyone says or does, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And we are able to give you praise, we're able to think your thoughts. We're able to see what you're saying, to visualize it. We're able to speak your word with confidence and boldness, expecting that to manifest in our lives. You've given us the measure of faith. You've given us all that pertains to life and godliness. You've given us authority in the name of Jesus. You've given us your word. You've given us your spirit. The blood of Jesus continually cleanses us of unrighteousness. And Lord, we are overwhelmingly blessed. And we thank you. We praise you as always you return to give you glory and honor. And as we leave from this place, we thank you that we are weapons. Hallelujah. Fully loaded. Praise God with the word of God to come against the thoughts and the schemes, the plans, the excuses, the limitations that the devil would try to bring against us, our families, our co-workers, and our communities, and our nation, and our planet. We thank you, we praise you, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Would you take just a moment? Uh, I jumped right into the Word of God, which is fine, but please take a look at your bulletins if you received one today. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. And by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on that day, he rested from all his work. Amen? Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. Amen? How many know God will complete what he begins? You can count on it. Why is that recorded? so that you can count on it. God will begin what he started. He's the author and the finisher. He won't stop halfway through. Come on. On the seventh day, God stopped working and celebrated. He was so excited about having a family. He decided it would be commemorated with a rest and celebration day. That puts a new twist on taking the Sabbath. Every seventh day, we should all rest and celebrate our membership in God's family with joy and great rejoicing. Amen? That's really why we come to church. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. On the seventh day, God stopped working and celebrated. He was so excited about having a family. And we are so excited to be a part of that family. Amen? He decided it would be commemorated with a rest and celebration day. That puts a new twist on taking a Sabbath. Every seventh day, we should all rest and celebrate our membership in God's family with joy and great rejoicing. Amen. Hallelujah. The church, of course, is open on Sunday. It is live here in the church and also broadcast on Facebook and later on YouTube. And then as, um, as uh, Nick uh, does the Friday night youth group. Um, if you have teenagers or young 20s, or um, they are certainly welcome to come. He uh, does an exceptional job, and um, uh, he, he, he is uh, here to bless them and to charge them and encourage them and strengthen them. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, next Sunday, uh, right now, we're going to have a time of fellowship with your church family. Enjoy provided a Sunday brunch. 
Amen. And um, uh, we are so grateful and thankful for uh, all of your blessings. As you know, it's listed on the bottom. All of our services are live or on demand. So uh, we, Mr. Joe is there, God bless him, making copies of CDs if you need one. But it's all posted on Facebook, um, Faith with Love Fellowship, and on YouTube. Again, Faith with Love Fellowship. Amen. Don't forget to check out our webpage at uh, www.flf.com, Faith with Love Fellowship. Amen. Hallelujah. And before we go, let's receive this morning's offering. Hallelujah. As God continues to show himself faithful in our lives, let us always honor him and be faithful in our giving. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You ready, my love? Mm -hmm. If you're writing a check, you can write it to Faith with Love Fellowship, and uh, you can use an offering envelope and designate if it's your tithe and offering. If Over and above that, if you want to give towards missions or towards alms to help poor folks or whatever uh, you'd like, or set apart a, a, a gift towards land and building fund, um, uh, we are so grateful, thankful. And again, on our website, faithlovefellowship.com, uh, www.flf.com, you can give securely through a ministry called Tithely. And uh, we encourage you that uh, are out there want to uh, do that. It would be a great blessing. Amen to us and to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, are you ready? Would you stand to your feet? Let's pray over this, our offering. Make our declaration of faith. You ready? Okay. This is my seed. I sow it into the kingdom of God. I sow because I love God and want to see faith with love fellowship continue to fulfill what God has called us to do. I believe that as I sow my seed, it shall be given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It shall come back to me in many ways. I thank you, Lord, for good opportunities coming my way. I thank you that the windows of heaven are open because of my obedience to sow my seed. I thank you, Lord, for the favor of God upon my life and the grace to prosper as you have promised me in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. One more time while you're standing. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for uh, ministering to us today. Ministering you, your presence, your word, your spirit. Thank you, Lord. We receive it. We are grateful. We appreciate it. Now may we be diligent to not only hear, be hearers of the word, but doers of it to give you honor and to give you glory and to allow you to have access to our lives and the world through us. As we sang in the beginning, let your love flow through us. We thank you, we praise you. Please bless us as we return to our homes. May our homes be blessed. We thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. We'll see you next week, okay? God bless you.